So, bloody balls, that conversation between my uncle and Patat was loaded with information. Budak seemed absolutely unstable. Can't even imagine what he's been through to become like that. It's as if he didn't know which side to be on. Fair to say, I wasn't inclined to ever show myself to him, as he could either embrace me or stab me, or both. When he left, I managed to talk briefly to Patat. When? This is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 38, The End Why Grinding wanted to smack your head? That's why I burning flew over here to find you. Ha! Huh. You should not have done that. Yudak's voice sounded calm and uncaring, but Neda could still hear a tension in it. I didn't give you that safe zone and went through what I went through just so you could eventually fly into your own that. Squares, Dad! What were you thinking? You couldn't even have been certain I was here. Huh. Tell me how you got here. Who released you? I believe I have a suspicion. <laughs> oh, I'm not burning telling you anything. What has grounding happened? First, I grounding here, you're dead, only to discover suspicions of you still being burning alive. A sound at the end of the hallway from where Nedak listened in startled her. It wouldn't do for some guards to discover her eavesdropping. She eased the door open a bit more, enough to slip through into the throne room. Neither Patat or Yodek saw her sneak towards the closest column. While cursing herself for being stupid, she slipped from column to column until she was as close to the cage as she could without being seen. By then, Yodak had also heard the sounds coming from the hallway. He cursed, uttering surprise. He did something with his feet. Nedak blinked. Was he dancing? He stretched out his right foot to the side twice, repeating it with the left, followed by his right foot stretching forward, also twice. This was again repeated by the left. His face looked pained and shone with sweat. He kept repeating those same movements, as if dancing to an unheard melody. At the same time the doors opened. He changed, taller, with dark, curly hair to his shoulders, her royal bearing, ridiculous outfit. Nedek's uncle had transformed into whiny. The four guards entering the hall stopped beyond the doorway, confusion littering their faces. Sire? They all bowed. This is unexpected. It is the change of the guards. Where are the others? Whiny's face lifted his eyebrows, looking as arrogant as ever. I apologize for questioning you, sire. A small bow again. You sent them away to be alone with the creature? The imposter gave a slight nod while keeping his chin up high, managing an annoyed and haughty expression. And you want us to leave you alone as well? We will return in half an hour, sire. The fake whiny turned his back to the guards, claiming satisfaction at their words. Nedek was impressed at the way the guard had been able to guess his supposed king's wishes. But why hadn't Yonak said anything? Perhaps he couldn't change his voice? That sounded silly to Nedek. Surely the line would include such an option. Yodak, with his years of experience, should have the skill to use it. The guards left. I dripping expected you to be an expert at your lines by now. You were already a burning master when I saw you last, despite your grounding young age. What has burning happened to you? Yodak, still wearing Winey's body, 
began pacing in front of the cage again. When he spoke, his voice was his own. Let's just be glad the gods guessed what their ruler wanted. Ha! <laughs> It is not easy to properly work the lines with body parts missing and others not working as they should. He slapped his left leg. I learned to walk without a limp, but the lack of a full set of toes makes certain things more difficult. Ha! <laughs> what grounding happened to you? Third time's a burning charm. Burning answer me. Yodak stopped pacing. His appearance turned back to himself. Nidak expected him to lash out at Patat for his demanding question. Yodak's face twisted, but not in anger. They caught me, Tat. They said they knew where you were. They threatened to kill you if I didn't abandon everyone and everything to work alongside them. They made me do the renounce ritual. Huh? His voice turned silent. They broke me. They utterly and completely broke me. I needed to keep you safe. I did Everything I could to keep you safe. It's been so long. He trailed off, massaging his forehead. I actively helped the order to try and kill my own niece. She outsmarted us all. <gasps> For which I'm grateful. I think... Am I? But then no, she's in the city. She should have kept hidden. What was she thinking, going out in public like that? At least I managed to keep my sister safe. <laughs> she won't be bothered while on vacation. I made certain of that. His head perked up, and he stared at Patat. Yeah. It was my niece who released the deception on your safe zone and brought you here, wasn't it? Of course it was. I cannot let her have the throne, Tad. She will never do what we want. She could ruin everything we've worked for the past decades. Nedak frowned at the sudden change of demeanor and tone of voice. He sounded harder, more determined, less emotional. They will gut you in four days, on the midpoint of the coronation festivities. They will read your gods, and they will confirm what the Order of the End has known for more than fifty years. This realm will come to an end soon. The apocalypse is near. It has been predicted. His wide, open eyes added a craziness to his face, fitting with the insane words. Burning grounding drips. You of all grounding people should know it isn't burning through. The Gorbak gods can't burn and tell the future. Someone couldn't handle the burning truth. We threw at them and grounding started that rumor. You burning know that. You grounding, dripping know that. Which is why you dripping kept me safe. Ah, is it? Is it truly? Is it truly merely a rumor? I am not as certain any more. But do not worry, my friend. The crazy light in his eyes dimmed. I will not let them kill you. I do not need confirmation of the prediction. I will free you before it happens. Even though I cannot do it now. It will not matter much. You will perish when this world comes to an end. Perhaps 
I can find a way to take you with me to Earth. Burning Earth? Patat interrupted him. Isn't that where Nadek comes from? Yes, indeed. That is where she was raised. Ha! It was I who guided my sister to find her way there. She never knew, of course. He laughed, sudden and barkin. In a way, my niece owes her life to me. Yeah. Ha! Either way, burning earth is an appropriate way of saying it. Because when the time comes for us to skip there to establish ourselves, it will burn. He laughed again. I will return tomorrow. Stay strong, my friend. Yodak wobbly skipped and disappeared. Nirak waited a moment longer to make sure he didn't come back. She walked up to the cage. But Tot had slumped down into a miserable pile of slimy-looking, rainbow-reflecting, capuchin-long-limbed heap. His five-ways split tail curled around himself. His four wings appeared less iridescent. He's mentally not all there, is he? Her voice startled Patat enough to jump. He's probably as confused as some of his words are. What are you grounding doing here? Oh, I thought you'd be happy to see me, after the predicament you put yourself in. What were you thinking, coming here? But if you don't want me, I'll just leave you. She bent through her knees, but that stretched out his arms. No, don't burn and leave. I am grounding glad to see you. But it's burning too dangerous. He furrowed his forehead. How much did you just hear? When Nedak told him she heard about everything, he burst out in a wide grin. It looked scary. Good. I won't have the burning repeat at all. Yerdak certainly changed since the last time I grounding saw him. That dripping messed up his head. He doesn't grounding know which side to be on. I can't burn him except he is stupid enough to believe a prediction made from Goa gods after all he's done to protect me. He did much more than I grinding thought I knew. Patat stared ahead of him, no doubt thinking about Yodak's missing eye, fingers and apparently toes as well. Nedak didn't know what to say. It had been more than fifty years since the Gorak and Nedak's uncle saw each other last. Of course, people changed during such a time although Yodak's change may not have been for the best. Ready to go? I'll skip you to my room. I should be back there tomorrow around noon. What? You're not dripping coming along with me? I doubt there is anything else you can burn and do here. There is, Nidak said slowly. She hadn't thought of it before. But now an idea popped in her head. I had already planned to stay the night here, so I could go to the law induction tomorrow, but... Law induction? What in the burning grounds is that? It doesn't sound very burning safe to expose yourself. I let myself be arrested to get here, under disguise, of course, and the guards who arrested me said I had to go to an induction about the laws and rules of Parallelo. I think it would be a good introduction to what's soon to be my kingdom, wouldn't you think? She grinned at Patat, who carried a look of utter perplexity. You had yourself arrested on burning purpose? That's burning brilliant! Nina blinked. That was not what she'd expected him to say. 
While I'm here, perhaps there is something else I can do. My parents' notes say there is a room in the palace, full of books and notes on the full power of the squares, triangles and lines, only accessible by someone with all the power, as a precaution to safeguard all the information in there. I can try and find it. Perhaps I can get in, regardless of how much power I have. Don't be burning, stupid. It's too risky. Ugh, I recognize that grinding stubborn look. Fine. Listen, Dripping Yudak returns here tomorrow. I can Dripping try to tease the location out of him. If he hasn't Dripping managed to get in himself and given all the books to his burning order. A familiar sound came from the hallway. Guts. The guards are back. What's that scowl for? She trailed off. Sorry, wrong choice of swear. I can't leave you here, Petot. Kid, I'll be burning fine. Come back for me tomorrow. Now that you've grinding been in this hall, you should be able to skip straight back here. Go, go. Nedak hesitated. But the Gorwak looked determined. She growled softly and skipped back to her cell. You have been listening to Nedek, Chapter 38, The End. Narrated, adventured and lived through by myself, Nedek. Written in a better way than I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Ha! Huh. You should not have done that. Yudak's voice sounded calm and uncaring. Oh, no, that wasn't calm and uncaring, was it? Without being s- Nidak. <coughs> <coughs> Nidak was impressed at the way the guard said- Nedak was impressed at the way the guard had been able to guess his supposed king with supposed surely the line would include such surely surely the line would include such an fuck me I learned to walk without a limp but the back I learned to walk without a limp but the lack of his fools fuck me burning oh, fuck my voice okay I do not need confirmation. Patat interrupted. Patat had slumped down into a miserable, miserable, miserable. Patat had slumped down into a miserable pile of. <coughs> she had. Bloody hell. Fucking typos.